And to the panel. Well, China gave the world this virus. And now, while we're distracted, China is exploiting that to strengthen its power. This week in Hong Kong, police arrested at least 15 prominent pro-democracy activists, including Martin Lee, the former leading politician and lawyer, plus the publisher Jimmy Lai, accused of illegally helping last year's massive pro-democracy and anti-China demonstrations, including one that attracted more than a million people. And that's not all. China has already stolen, or has tried to, the South China Sea, very important shipping lanes there, important to Australia. And in the past week, it's tightened its grip there. It's opened two new research stations on artificial reefs in territory actually claimed by the Philippines and others. A couple of weeks ago, it allegedly sank a Vietnamese fishing boat. And last weekend, announced that it had created two new government districts to control the whole region. Well, Australia's Foreign Minister, Maurice Payne, this week condemned China's power grab there. Meanwhile, the United States has sent a group of ships led by the USS America and also including an Australian frigate, HMS Parramatta, to assert our right to enter that international territory that China's trying to steal. Joining me is the panel, former Labor Senator Graham Richardson, now a Sky News host, and Tina McQueen, a Vice President of the Federal Liberal Party. Graham, China has reminded, it, reminded us, hasn't it, that uh, it is a hostile power. Yeah, the big ugly bully on the block. Uh, that's what they've reminded us they are. I mean, they, they've always been that, but occasionally they, they'll, they'll just let that slip and, and try and be nice to everybody and pretend. But when the crunch comes, as you're well aware, Andrew, totalitarian regimes are exactly that. And they will always revert to type. And that's what China's doing right now. I t totally agree with the, the type reverting to type. His values are fundamentally anti-ours. Tina McQueen, the whole thing about this is interesting. Mm. China's obviously been sending out lots of aid now to countries battling with the coronavirus crisis. A lot of it is actually substandard, but still it's, it's doing it. But its reputation, it's not coming through this crisis very well at all. No, it's not, Andrew. And I think most of the countries around the world uh, really are, are united in there should be an, um, you know, a, a look into China, but independent a look at what's going on and how this corona started and, and their actions around the world. I mean, I was in Sri Lanka a couple of years ago and they were petrified because they couldn't repay their debt and have now, of course, they've lost their port in Sri Lanka to the Chinese. Including a lot of swagger territory around that port, the second biggest port in Sri Lanka. Graham Richardson, are you worried, meanwhile, back here about a sort of almost Chinese level of control over our own lives that one government after another has been so happy to impose? And more curiously to me, Australians have been very happy to accept. Yeah, look, it's, it's, it, it creeps up on you, Andrew. Um, and, and this is what the, the Chinese are really expert at um, because they never go away. When you think they've gone away, it's just because they're, they're hiding what they're doing a little better than they were before. The Chinese never stop. And one thing I, I think we, we ought to mention is the enormous pressure they place upon the diaspora. And I think that really, really is scary. And uh, I know that they place enormous pressure on on Chinese people here, or people with Chinese heritage, because of course they've they've got relatives at home, and, and they, the Chinese are never beyond threatening relatives at home. Yeah, but what worries me, Tina, is the is that our own politicians are doing Chinese-style authoritarianism. Now, some of it, yeah, they say it's all in a good cause, save lives, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, but some of the restrictions are clearly way over the top, and they don't seem to be very keen to remove them at all. Uh, does this surprise you at all? It does surprise me, Andrew, um, especially from a, from a Liberal government. But I tell you, the pressure's really mounting now. I know the emails I received from branch members from around the country. Look, they are very compliant and very happy to help. But there's great frustration now, Andrew, and particularly as though everyone has done so well and we've flattened or, you know, that curve they talk about. I think it's time to look, re reopen, get things back on track. We, we have to, Andrew. There's a devastation caused already with small businesses and that's our, 
liberal base. And a lot of those people have lost their businesses. Very sad, and we need to restart as soon as possible. The Prime Minister's done a wonderful job, but the next step is get us going again, Andrew. Now, Graeme, how long do you think Australians will put up with some of these bans? Oh, I think that the frustration level has got to the point, Andrew, where the, the answer will be not much longer. I think people are, are, are... You see rebellion now anyway. You do see more people about. You do see more people talking to each other. I mean, in the end, the, we're human beings. Uh, we, we don't live soul lives. We need contact with others. We need to trade. We need to stock up. And we will. And I, I think um, the government will have to take notice of the people. This is one time where the, uh, I think the mob might be passing a vote of no confidence in those that govern them. Andrew, can I just wow. say it's, it's the emotional toll as well. I mean, people like myself, I'm very close to my two grandchildren. I haven't seen them for weeks. And honestly, I, there's not a day goes by that I'm not distraught and probably sitting in a corner crying for a couple of hours. That toll is great, even more so than financial.